Hello everybody and welcome back to Knaveswell Farm. As you can see I'm studying field number 6 and this is the field of choice today to turn into silage. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to mow it with just a standard front and rear mower and then we're going to rake it up or windrow it, however you want to call it. And uh, I think after that we'll probably get a different mod for a forage harvester and uh, we'll pick it up that way and obviously put it into a silage pit. So that is today's job. Let's get cracking. Now I'm in the, the Fent 820 again. The first thing we need to do is drive over to the store because I've just updated the mowers which we have in game before we had the Pottingers, uh, but I've actually moved away from them now. I've gone for the Coon, but they're not the standard in game ones. They are the updated ones. They're rescaled and much better for our farm. Uh, so they are the butterfly mowers. It should get the job done much quicker. And actually, to be fair, we're probably going to be doing a very similar job on Thornton Farm. I don't tend to duplicate what I do, uh, but it won't be with the butterfly mower. It will be with the Crone Big M. Looking forward to using that again. Uh, I think actually all the mods, all, all the maps which can you can justify using it on are Oxygen David's maps. Weirdly. I think it's probably because they've got much bigger fields. These ones are, are tighter. Right, the link arms have gone down, that's good. And as you can see, the scaling is much better. So let's he head over to Phenom 6 and we will begin. I've been browsing the mod sites and really there are quite a lot of forage harvesters. There, there are plenty to choose from. I was kind of going to go for a John Deere or a class, one of the two. Haven't really decided which one. The Jaguar looks really good, uh, but the John Deere ones are also pretty good as well. Right, <laughs> always a struggle getting into the field. And this would look pretty good as a time lapse. So that is what we'll do. I'll just put the first headland on first, I think, and we can go from there. So yeah, I do mowing quite a bit, but not really often. I think I used to do it a lot more a few months ago. Previously, uh, it's been a bit too much, I think. That is why I had a bit of negativity surrounding it. But at the moment, I think, really, it's been quite a while since I've done it. So we can do an episode of mowing. I always find it fun anyway. But also in this episode, we have to rake it all up as well. Because tomorrow, I want to get it all done with the forager. Get everything finished. And eventually, with the money which will come from this, we will be able to buy our new tractor. Haven't really decided what it's going to be yet, but it's going to be a fairly high horsepower tractor. Nothing too big, but it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a decent make and it's going to be relatively large, but nothing too big for the map. Okay, so from now onwards I think the rest of the mowing in this field will be a time lapse so see you in a minute or two
And there we have it, the field is done. So I don't know how well it came across on camera, but when we hit the really weedy spot in the middle, we had uh, a really bad yield and it really did become clear because the amount of grass which the mower dropped was considerably less. So it just shows you how running a soil mod, it's so important to keep on top of your weed killing because otherwise it's gonna wipe out your crop even if it is just grass. Now we're not gonna need this tractor again today. So if we can fit it in the shed here, I will do. Um, we're gonna use the, probably the John Deere actually. I don't really use it too often. So that'd be a good tractor to go for. But yeah, that is uh, one big job out of the way. I'll switch the engine off there. Put the handbrake on and jump out the tractor. Now the, the rake which we have is not exactly massive. It's only this small coon. But for this map, I think it is good enough. It's just field number six is quite a lot bigger than all the others. Did, did I put the tractor up here? Forgotten where I've put it now. No, nope, where did I put it? Unless it's down here. Oh, there we go. Yes, I took the front loader off it. That is the reason why it's here. So onto the windrower with the 6910. Get that job done today and then tomorrow when I have found a decent forage harvester we can get straight into that field, get it all done, put into our secondary pit and it will have another load of silage to sell which is going to be great for the farm. Right, let's get that on there. PTO has automatically attached. I think this tractor will be okay with this. It, it should be. It's such a small windrow, really. The only issue is the mud. It's not too bad. Some tractors seem to cope a lot better than others when you go through the mud. I don't know if it's the weight or the size or whatever. I don't know. I really have no idea. But this in itself is going to be, once again, quite a big job. Um, I don't think I'll time lapse it, I'll just do some off screen. But really, I don't think we have to go around the headland more than twice because otherwise it's going to get a bit messy with all the turning. Now, one thing you can do is you can have the. Um, yes, I thought to put it up. Terrible driving. Yeah, you can have the rake following you when you're mowing on Follow Me. But I don't always do that because it's not always realistic. I know that you can have a worker following you, but it's amazing. You'll be amazed how many people complain when I do that. Now, if I was just playing on my own without doing a video, I would have it on Follow Me. But for the purpose of this video, or this series actually, I'm not going to because. On Nato Farm, it's not a huge farm, we probably would have a worker, but today, as it's not a massive job we're doing, we probably wouldn't need anyone else, so I think we, we can get away with doing it ourselves, we don't have to have everyone having a worker, we don't have to have a worker on everything. But that's doing a pretty good job. Amazingly, we're going slower doing this job than when we were mowing. We we're doing 13 downhill with the mowers on and the uh, limit for this is 11 yeah uh, this could be an issue this corner is pretty tight let's see how well it goes oh, not too bad the rear steering on the windrower is very helpful So this is our second time around. Once we've done this, we'll be going up and down the field. That way I can make it a lot neater because you can try and keep the swaths as straight as possible, which for me is not exactly easy. I know everyone's gonna say GPS mod. I know, I know, I just, oh, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to use it. I know it's used on a lot of farms, but would it really be used on a farm this small for just mowing a field of grass? I find it hard to believe, but I don't know. 
you tell me. I just, for this map at least, I cannot bring myself to use it. I think maybe on the bigger maps I might do, but I don't know, I'm going to have to try. I've got nothing against the mod. It's just, I don't know, I just like to do stuff without relying on GPS, which I know in real life would sound crazy, but for Farming Simulator, um, I just prefer doing it this way. I think it's just my playing style, really. Call it boring, but I prefer it this way. Yeah, it cuts across there because it makes it a bit easier. And then, we can begin to go up and down the field. You probably noticed I went kind of straight over there, but on this corner here, it was a bit wiggly. Not that it matters too much with the mower, but it would matter more with the rake. So I need to try and straighten it off if I can do. These are such good looking tractors. I think, in my opinion, although yeah, the new ones are really good, I do like the new ones. I think this style of John Deere is one of my favourites. The new ones are really nice. Um, I think older than this style, I'm not quite so keen. And slightly newer than this style, also not quite so keen on that either. But yeah, what they like currently, and this style, they're my favourites. This is probably my favourite though. I can feel I'm putting a bit of a curve on it. It's not too bad, but yes, it's definitely not perfectly straight. But it'd be fine. It'd be easy enough to pick it up. The way I'm going to do it by picking it up, I know you can use course play, stuff like that. But I can imagine with the mud and the narrow gateways, it's just going to be chaos. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do my, my usual trick and either use follow me or I'm going to put the trailer on the back of the forage harvester and do it that way. I haven't yet decided. Usually, when doing the first headland, attaching the trailer to the forager can be a good method. So I might do that. Lovely summer's evening though. This is the same day as when we had all that rain and I got the fence stuck. But it's really improved. But it makes a difference because if you just have sunshine every single day and there are mods out there which allow you to just do that so you never get rain, I think it would get boring and for soil mod it would also make it very difficult because none of the fields would be watered. You'd always have to manually spray them with water and that is quite a lot of spraying. That's on top of the herbicide and also putting your nutrients on there as well. So. <laughs> That would get pretty boring. There has been occasions where, for some reason, for whatever reason it might be, in my save games it never really does rain and I don't really know the reason for it, uh, but it's happened before. It's not a mod or anything, it's just, I don't know, it's just happened. The, the rain probability must have been really low. But we're coming to the end here. It's done it surprisingly quickly. That just shows how you don't need a bigger windrower. This one is perfectly adequate. But we have got an almighty tractor on it. Thinking about the different forage harvesters, it kind of brings me back to my very early days on Daggerwin. I've had channels before this, uh, so I'm not going to say my early days on YouTube, but yeah, when I first started Daggerwin, which was actually the beginning of 2014, but I didn't really put any videos on until the end of 14, at the release of 15. Um, and yeah, basically what I used to do, how I started this channel properly, was like cinematic videos for Farming Simulator. I didn't use to narrate at all, I never said anything, which would probably seem really weird now. But yeah, basically what I did, I just used to do like five minute videos showing different pieces of equipment working in the field, and the videos are still out there you have to search back on the channel and I think actually amazingly those videos were the thing they were the thing that got me recognized on YouTube which is amazing really because they're terrible videos I don't know how everyone started to subscribe from those but 
it just shows how um, amazing my subscribers are. But yeah, I just want to thank everyone again for all of your support over the year and a half. Probably coming up to two years now. I probably thank you more than enough, but you know, you can't thank you enough because without you, this channel would not be where it is today. I could keep putting videos out, but if no one's there to watch them, it'd be a pretty boring channel. Right, we've, we're almost finished. You can see it's pretty much done. But yeah, coming back to those cinematic videos, um, I can remember, because you've got the real-time analytics on YouTube, you can see how many views you're currently having per minute on a video, and they were, I don't know, it was about 14 views an hour to start off with, which these days would seem ridiculously rubbish, but back then, when my most successful video probably had about 500 views, it was astonishing, and that gave me the motivation to keep making videos and then eventually I would have got like 30 views in an hour and that was just incredible it was unheard of for me so I made even more videos and it just went from there really it just stemmed from there and it just gave me the, the motivation to keep going with it and then I started to narrate of course I, I got the confidence to narrate I have narrated videos before that but yeah I didn't really fancy it and that's where we are today. So, hmm, it is incredible. Anyway, that is it also for today. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, you can join me again same time tomorrow for more on Knaves Farm. But until then, see you again soon. Bye for now.